is in the Ashanti region have launched investigations in the latest shooting to hit the region this morning. Suspected robbers earlier today gunned down a watchman guarding the office of A2 Enterprise, an aluminium products dealership venture at Santasi Kokobing in Kumasi. It comes after a long string of criminal activities, including murders and shootings in Kumasi and other parts of the region. Well, today, 49-year-old Busompim Ando was found dead with stabbed wounds and his body dropped inside the A2 Enterprise shop. Manager of the shop, Stephen Ochi, says the robbers made away with an amount of about 89,000 cities and a power generator. Erastus Asari Donko has been following this story for us. He joins us via Zoom for more. Erastus, first, tell us how the, uh, the whole event unfolded. Well, so we had information uh, this morning that somebody, a security man, uh, has been found dead in a shop at Santasi Kokobing, uh, which is just uh, after Santasi in Kumasi. Uh, so as usual, we went to the scene. And indeed, uh, the company's name is A2 Enterprise. They sell aluminum products. But they have an office where they make the uh, uh, sales. And that is where this gentleman, who acts as a Washington Bay attendant, then in the night, they have employed as a night security man who mans uh, this office. And so when you look at the facility in the morning where we got there, we saw that there was blood in front of the shop and uh, the accounts of the people indicating they found him inside the shop. So it, it means that they might have uh, struggled with him and you could see the signs on the ground and stabbed him in front of the shop and dragged him inside the shop they had gagged him uh, with, uh, you know, uh, a scarf. And they've tied his hands behind him uh, with, with a rope as well. And he, he was lying in a pool of blood inside the shop. When we spoke to the manager, we understood that um, an amount of eight to 9,000 cities was stored in a safe in there. That has been taken. Um, they also took a power generator uh, that was in the shop as well. Then there is another shop which is um, just upstairs. It's a, it's a two-story building. All of them are, uh, are full of shops. And so when you go to the second floor, you find another shop, which is a private ECG Ghana Water uh, Company vending station. That one has been broken into as well. And there we are told that they took away 8,000 cities from uh, some of the drawers. So in all... Uh, this is what we found so far at the Ahinema Kokobin robbery uh, incident. Police have been there to take away the body. Uh, they have started investigations uh, into uh, this incident. Definitely, we would want to know what uh, police investigations have uncovered so far. Do you know? Erastus, uh, do you know what investigations by the police has uncovered so far? Well, when we got to the scene, um, the police had come there as usual doing um, their field checks. Uh, they were in the community um, asking questions, just like we were asking questions there. Um, uh, we were told by the uh, commander, uh, who uh, is the divisional commander for Asuka, uh, that at, in due time, the police will make a statement on it. But then for now, uh, they have started their investigations and so uh, they cannot say anything for the moment. So they have not disclosed to us um, where investigations have led to, but they say that it's early days yet, and they have started their investigation. They are picking information on the ground. And as and when uh, they are done, they will be able to brief the public on, on, on what their, their findings are. Certainly, this is not the first time we are hearing of this shooting and murder in the Ashanta region. How are residents responding to this latest incident? In fact, within the Ahinema Kokobin stretch, even within that same area. Erasta Sasari Donko is a man in the Ashanti region. He's uh, been updating us on the incident uh, that happened uh, there this morning robbery attack, shooting incident. And he will be coming back um, for more. On this, all right. So I'm told uh, uh, Erastus Asari Donko is back. Erastus, tell me more. 
uh, about how residents are coping with this incident. Spoke by the shop owners um, who share, uh, you know, that space with this particular shop owner. Uh, they told us that this is about the fourth time that they've been hit. Uh, some of them were showing us uh, some of their metal gates that the people, when they come in, they weld, uh, they, they break into it using, you know, some machines to cut the locks and then enter the shops to steal uh, their items. So this is about the fourth time that that place has been hit. They also speak of, of uh, robberies within the, that particular area. They were requesting that the police would set up a uh, sort of a roadblock uh, for that place and uh, get people, security personnel, to man uh, those areas. If they could get a checkpoint uh, closer to these areas uh, to serve as a deterrent to people who might want to uh, continue uh, this particular act. So you could sense um you know some level of fear in the people as uh, this happens erastus i mean uh, this is the only uh, latest in the uh, string of bizarre incidents of shooting and murder we've seen in that region uh, bring us up to book uh, some of the events that have happened with regards to uh, these shooting and murder incidents so the ones that come readily uh, to mind is the recent one at the Tunsu uh, Agogo, uh, the one involving a dancing rural bank. And the similarity with this one is that the security man uh, with that bank was also found dead inside the shop. They broke the lock as usual. And he was also found in the same position with his hands and legs tied and a tape, uh, you know, his mouth taped as well. And he was uh, lying there dead when they found him in the morning. He was a ninth uh, security man as well, just that he was with uh, a private security firm. And so um, it sends, uh, 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 you know, uh, some similarities to this particular one. Again, I can recall the lady who was gunned down uh, just about two months ago at Maxima Junction. Uh, that is still fresh in our minds. Uh, police are yet to arrest anybody in connection with um, uh, that killing. Uh, so those are the uh, ones that come to mind, but there have been a string of murders as well, and robberies around Bokrum and this environs. I, I, I thought you were seeing that, and I also see. In the Ashanti region, and he's been updating us on the crime event in that region. Let's speak with criminologist Dr. Opokuwari who um, is a criminologist and also a research, uh, a crime researcher. He's also a lecturer at KNUSC. I'm grateful for your time, uh, Doc, this afternoon. Uh, good afternoon to you, uh, Aisha. Doc, you've been, you've been following events in the Ashanti region. Lately, we've seen a number of murders and shootings in that region. Uh, Doc, what has your research shown that is uh, accounting for these increasing uh, events? Okay, thank you very much uh, for the question. I mean, as I said, um, when there are crimes, or when there's a crime, we have to look at the nature of the crimes that, that we have. And you can see that based on the patterns of crimes that's we are recording in, in Ashanti region, you can see a variation in the nature of the crimes, especially in the murders and the robberies. You can see a lot of variations in there. So what it tells me is that the number of reasons may be accounting for, for the patterns. And most of these reasons, as we have, we have found them to be, are basically strains and stresses. And, and in criminology, when we talk about strains, and stresses, we are looking at those things within society that put a lot of people under frustration, that makes people more frustrated. So you see that these stresses and strains can come from a number of reasons, a number of factors. We can look at issues of social issues, economic issues, you can look at marital issues, relationship issues. So you can see that once people get frustrated, in fact, there's what we call frustration aggression principle. That says that the more people become frustrated, there's a tendency for them to be aggressive. And most of the time, one easy way for people to express that kind of aggression is in, in, in the kind of violent ways that they express them. And most of the time, murders are what, what we normally see. So these are some of the things that I think are causing the patterns that we see, whether it is spousal killing, whether it is robbery, there is that kind of stresses and strain within the system to which many people are responding to. 
Doc, I'm sure you're worried about this incident because, I mean, for a long time we've been having this. I mean, and over the period, yes, you talk about all these. And the reason why I don't even want to dwell much on the uh, factors accounting for these is the fact that the issues are compounding by the day. The police keep assuring us of the different strategies to deal with this, but the incidents <coughs> keep increasing by the day. The police themselves are sometimes overpowered by these robbers. Are we losing the fight against criminals? Yes, I think we have to actually do more. And for me, we have to do more of, of pattern analysis to be able to understand really how to be able to devise strategies to, to, to meet them. For instance, in terms of robberies, you can see that there's an increase uh, you know, in terms of the patterns that we, we've seen, especially within the region, where you have people targeting specific businesses over the period. So within the past few months, you will realize that specific, specific businesses and individuals have been targeted, where people are, are robbed at gunpoint right in the middle of the street, and also you know, near business centers and also are closer to banks. So that tells us that, look, something is happening, and the police must revise and devise other means than we, than we already know to be able to do to do with the patterns that we are seeing now. As I've already said some time ago, there has been an evolution in the nature of crimes that we are, we are recording or we've recorded in the country. Now you see that there's a dwindling of what we call residential crimes or residential robberies in particular to what we call street robberies. When that happens, what it means is that you have to revise those approaches that you have applied and used over the period in dealing with those, those kind of robberies to a new way of, of policing where you would let your presence be much more felt within within the streets because our streets by their nature you know the way our streets are configured have a lot of obstacles and they normally predispose people to certain criminal acts aside that many of our businesses are also on the streets and they are mainly not manned so what happens is that if people are not able to now go to the homes and rob and now they have to move to the street. The, the, the businesses along the streets become targets, especially when they don't have a lot of guardianship or protection. So most of the time, the criminals look at these things and then begin to act. And that is why you see that the patterns we are seeing now seems to be on the increase. So coupled with the kind of strains and stresses I've said, and now the, the businesses as we have them and the nature of our streets and our, our businesses also make it much convenient for, for these criminals to operate. And most of the times we've seen, they are almost you know, successful most of the time that they, they strike. And that is the worrying part of the whole event. If criminals are almost successful all the time and overpower the police, what should we do differently? What different strategies should the police adapt? Yes, I think that um, going forward, the police must let their presence be more felt. Okay, so I was very happy, I mean, some days ago when I saw the, 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 the new unit. I mean, I think it's been there, but it's now that, it, I mean, the, the activities are now being brought into the kind of policing strategies that we've been using over the years, where we have the K-9 units. Because, look, once we have the presence of the police in very strategic locations and centers within our streets, it sets certain signals to, to would-be criminals and motivated offenders that, look, once... You, you embark on a certain criminal activity. By the time you get off the street, within a certain radius or perimeter, you are more likely to be busted by the security agencies. And with the presence of the, of the dogs and the K-9 unit, at least they can give hot, hot chase and hot pursuit so, for most of these criminals. If you look at the patterns that we've observed for the period, those that are using motorbikes, immediately they do the robberies, they are able to move and nobody pursues them because of the nature of, the, of, our, of our roads. Okay, so with the dogs, the dogs can give them a hot cheese and probably get them. So for me, it is something that I think is good. It's, it's a very good approach that we are incorporating into, into the overall strategy that we've been using over the period. And I think that the presence of the police should be more. Secondly, and which I think I've also made that point some time ago, that the police must revise their approach in, in, the, in, in, in search, search, you know, within, within, within the traffic and on the street. We must, we must avoid, you know, searching truck, truck drivers and taxi drivers, in, I mean, these days, and begin searching, you know, users of motorcycles, especially those people who, two people who sit on motorbikes with backpacks. Because if you look at the patterns that we've seen over the period, these are mostly guys on motorbikes with backpacks you know, robbing people and then speeding off. So now we must begin to do this stop and search 
you know, of, of motorbike riders and begin to now do profiling of them. And, and I think that once we do that, at least we can pre prevent most of these crimes even before they happen. Mm. If, if we don't do that and we just go about the normal way we've been doing over that period, trust me, the police will be overwhelmed and, and the, the robbers and the bad guys will always have their way. Mm. I'm grateful for your time. Dr. Pokoware is a criminologist and crime researcher. He's a lecturer at the KNUS.